Okay, now today, guys, we're going to be using Model 3, Lesson 14. And the objective is to add or subtract three fractions using the lowest common denominators. Now, we really haven't stressed lowest common denominators so far, and you're going to see in a minute. What we've been doing is taking the quickest or easiest common denominator by multiplying the two denominators. Now, today, we're going to learn something that is going to make our life a lot easier, okay? So we're still looking at MAFS5 and F11, which we're adding, subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Okay. Now, essential question, how can I find the lowest common denominators to add or subtract fractions? Okay, let's take this problem for an example. Now, I have 1 sixth plus 3 twelfths. Now, the way we've done this in the past, I would take and in order to find a common denominator, I would multiply these two together. And I'm going to get 72. So, wow. I'm going to convert both these to 72. So, I would end up having to multiply 6 by 12 to get 72. So, that means I'd have to multiply the top numerator by 12. And I end up with 12 72s. Now, the 3 twelfths, I would end up having to multiply that by 6 over 6. And that would give me 18 72s. So, my final answer here would have been 72, and I would have ended up with 30. So, 30 72s. And more than likely, this answer is not going to be available on your multiple choice. So, you're going to have to reduce this. Now, I've shown you all a bit on how to reduce, and the way I like to do it is I can find, I know both of these are even, so I know they're both divisible by 2. And I know 2 times 15 would be 30, and 2 times 36, so I'd end up with 15, 36. But this is still, I can still reduce this. Because this answer still probably wouldn't be in your answer for multiple choice. And I can see the both multiples of 3. And I know 3 times 5 would be 15. And 3 times 12. And I can, I'm dividing and multiplying by 3 so I can take them out. So my final answer would be 5 twelfths. Now, that was a lot of work because I had to reduce it. Now... Let's talk about least common denominators, okay? Now, if I were to take both multiples, both factors, I'm gonna say six and 12, and I started to skip count to them, I wanna find a multiple they both have that's lowest. And I go six, 12. Oh, wait a minute, look at that. They both are factors of 12. And that really should be the first question you always ask yourself when you have a couple fractions. Can I turn one of the denominators to the other? And you can see in this case where I have 1 sixth plus 3 twelfths, I can turn this 6 into 12. And that's all we want to do is have common denominators. So I know 1 6 times 2 over 2 would give me 2 twelfths. So I have 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. 12 equals 5 twelfths. Look what we did compared to everything else just because we found the least common denominator. Okay? So that's what we're going to be doing from now on. We're looking for the least common denominator. Not the easiest. The easiest is just to multiply the two together, two denominators together, find a common one. But we want to find the least common denominator. Let's try something else. Now this time, let's say we got three fractions. And we're going to add them together. And I'm looking at them. And the first thing I want to see is, can I turn one into the other? And I see I got one half and one fourth and one twelve. Now, do I have to add them all together at the same time? No. Remember, we can add them together, you know, two of them and then add the third one. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to take these two first right here. Because I can see I can turn halves into fourths very easy. Because one half times 2 over 2 would give me 2 fourths. So now I have 2 fourths plus 1 fourth plus 1 twelfth. When I add the 2 fourths and 1 fourth, I'm going to get 3 fourths. 
and now I have 1 12th. Now, once again, I can ask, can I turn one into the other? And if I don't know, it's always good to come up here and do this. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go 4, 8, 12. Well, looky there. They both can be turned into 12 again. So I'm going to take my 3 fourths. I'm going to multiply, multiply that by 3 over 3, which gives me 9 twelfths. So now I have 9 twelfths plus 1 twelfth, which equals 10 twelfths. Now, even though this is really reduced, it is not in simplest form, which we don't usually have to do simplest form, but I want you to realize that you may sometimes have to find that in order to find it in your multiple choice, because you're looking for an equivalent fraction. And I can see both these numbers are even. So once again, I know they're divisible by two. So I know two times five and two times six will give me 12. I'm at, uh, multiplying and dividing by two. So now I have five, six. All right, let's try it again. Let's see how this works when we're subtracting. Now, remember how we would do this before, and I'm going to do the efficient way. I know we'd go 6 times 4 would be 24. And I know I had to multiply 6 by 4, so I had to multiply 5 by 4. And I would get 20 for the 5, 6, because the 5, 6 is going to be 20, 24. And I'm going to subtract, and I know my fourth, my 1 fourth, the denominator, I'm going to have to multiply by 6 to get 24. So my numerator right here, I'm going to have to multiply that by 6. And I end up with 6 24s. So 20 minus 6 gives me 14 24s. Now I'm going to have to reduce that. And I can see they're both even. So I know 2 times 7 gives me 14. And 2 times 12 gives me 24. I take them out. And I can see I have 7 12s. And I know they're not divisible by 2 because I have an even number, which is 7. They're not divisible by 3 because 7 is not a multiple of 3. And they're not divisible by 5 because it's not, it doesn't end in 0, 5. So now I'm done with that. Now, let's try finding a, a least common do, denominator. So once again, I'm going to go 4 and 6. I'm doing 4, 8, 12, 6, 12. Oh, there's that 12 again. So that means if I took both fractions and turned them into 12s, I know 5, 6 times 2 over 2 would give me 10 12s. So this one's a 10 12s minus 1 fourth. I know it's going to be 3 over 3 because 3 times 4 is 12. So it's going to be 3 12s. And 10 12s minus 3 12s gives me 7 12s. Oh, look, I'm already in simplest form because I use my least or my lowest common multiple. OK. OK, let's see how this works with subtracting three fractions. OK, well, I'm, when we're subtracting, I'm going to start with my first two because we're going left to right. And I have five, six minus one fourth. Let's come up here. And I know if we multiply four times six, we get 24. But let's see if we have a smaller multi common multiple. So I know six, 12. And 4, 8, 12, there's my 12s. So I know that I can convert them both to 12s with the equivalent fractions. Because 5, 6 times 2 over 2 is going to give me 10 12s. So this is 10 12s right here. Now 1 fourth times 3 over 3 will end up giving me 3 12s. And seven, 10 12 minus 3 12 gives me 7 12. Now I still have one third to subtract from here. Now let's take a look. Now I know I've got 3 here and I got 12. And 3, 6, 9. Well, look at that. I can turn my thirds into 12s. So now I got 7 12. I have one third. I know I have to multiply that by 4 over 4. And that gives me 4 12. So 7 12 minus 4. 12 equals 3 twelfths. Now, that's a good answer. But once again, let's say uh, it's not on my multiple choice. So it may be not in B in lowest form. So let's see. Are they both divisible by 2? Well, no, 3 is not divisible by 2. Are they both divisible by 3? Well, 3 is divisible by 3, and 12 is divisible by 3 also. 
So I can go three times one is three and three times four is 12 and take out my common factors. And I can see now that this uh, three twelfths was also equal to one fourth. All right, let's go for a large one. Just think if we were to multiply these out, look at the large denominators I'd have. Eight times 12, that'd be 96. Yeah, that's, that's getting pretty large. But let's see, let's start with these two. And even with eight and six, eight times six is 48. So that's gonna be pretty big. So let's see if we can have a common denominator, a common multiple that's slower than that. So let's say six and eight. And I'm going six, 12, 18, 8, 16, 24, 18 and 6 is 24. Oh, look at that, 24s. So I can turn both these into 24s. 7 8 times something equals 24s. And I know 8 times 3 is 24, so 7 times 3 is going to be 21. So I know I got 21 24s. Now 5 12, excuse me, 2 2 6 times something equals 24 and I know four times six is 24 so I have to multiply the top and two times four is eight so we're going to subtract eight 24 from it and 21 minus eight we come over 21 minus eight which is going to be eight excuse me 13. So now we have 13 24 Now we still got to subtract 5 12 from here. But if you look, 12 and 24, the next multiple of 12 would be 24. So we can just turn them both into 24s now. So 5 12 times 2 over 2 would equal 10 24 So now I got 13 24s minus 10 24s equals 3 24s. Now, that looks pretty low, but let's look at this 3. I know 8 times 3 is 24, so I can see that 3 times 1 here and 3 times 8 would equal 24. Take out the common ones, so I know 3 24 3 would be equal to one-eighth. All right, so the basic rule on this one, you have three things. The three things I would look at as soon as I had two fractions I was trying to add or subtract. My first rule would be see if you can turn one denominator into the other, okay? In other words, if I had a one fourth and a, and I was adding that to a one twelfth, I'd say, can I turn a four into 12? And if I can, I'm gonna go ahead and create an equivalent fraction of one fourth times three over three, this gives me three twelfths. And that makes it real simple for me to add them in there now, because three twelfths plus one twelfth equals four twelfths, okay? Now, if I can't turn one into the other, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip count by each denominator to find the LCM, which is the least common multiple. So in this case, let's say four and 12, if I didn't recognize that up at four and 12 up here, I'd skip count by four, eight, 12, and I can see that 12 is the common multiple, okay? And the least common multiple. Now my last choice, number three, my last choice would be to multiply the denominators to find common 
multiple. Now that's what we have been learning. And the step three is what we've been using because when we use the models, that's basically what the models did. When you combine your thirds and your fourths, you're basically multiplying the denominators to find a common multiple. But now we're at the point where we're getting, our denominators are getting pretty large. So we really need to find the least common multiple, okay? All right, well, I hope this helps you. We're gonna try this out and we'll try some more in class. Okay, now this doesn't follow exactly in the book. So um, I'll put up a worksheet if you want some more um, examples of this where you can work on. But basically, I want you to use the least common multiples to add or subtract three fractions. Okay, have a good evening.